What's up guys, welcome back. So today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit unorthodox. What I have in my hand here is the three inch LED pods from LastFit. Now they make these in two different versions, the sport version and the HP version. These are the HPs, these have a higher output. These things are crazy bright. And the reason I say we're gonna be doing something unorthodox, instead of putting these on the truck or any vehicle, they're actually going on my new bad boy Maverick. Reason being is there's of course no lighting on this tractor. My John Deere had a headlamp on it. Um, and there's been a couple times where I'm cutting the grass since we bought this new property. We have a decent amount of land. I run low on light. A couple times I've actually ran out of light and I'm cutting the grass in the dark uh, with the John Deere of course. I haven't done it with this, there's no lighting. That's why we're gonna put these pods on here. It's completely, this is obviously gonna be a custom job. There's no mounting you know, for this type of uh, setup. You guys know me, I like to kind of tinker and, and customize and do things my own way. So I'll show you exactly how we're gonna get these mounted on the tractor. But if you're looking for an LED pod that is just insanely bright, give these a look. The links will be down below, of course. I'll put some specs on your screen as well, um, just between the, the HP version, which is what we have, and the sport version, which is kind of like the, the lower output version of these, um, but just crazy bright. So let's get it unboxed, we'll get it installed on the tractor, and I'll give you a look at how bright they are. So you can see the box that they come in, very well packaged. Let's pop this open here. Get that cover out of the way. Little instruction manual, which we're not gonna need because again, <laughs> we're kind of just flying by the seat of our pants here. These are the brackets that we're gonna need to mount them. The LED pods themselves, as you can see in there. And then this must be all of the hardware and all that good stuff. Yeah, a couple bags of hardware, and then the Deutsch connectors, um, which again, we'll go over the wiring when we go through the install. So let's get the, one of these lights out of here real quick and we'll take a peek. All right, so here is the pot itself. Very heavy duty. Um, feels really stout when you're holding it in your hand. Finish is very good. Again, it's a three inch pot, but yeah. I can't remember what, what pattern I actually bought these in. I'll, I'll check it and put it on your screen, but they of course come in the all different beam patterns. You know, the spot, the flood, the driving, the fog, all that good stuff. I can't even remember what the heck we bought. So <laughs> I'll look at the uh, my email and I'll, I'll put it on the screen there for you. But yeah, they seem very well built. Let's get into the install. Before we do anything else, you wanna pick a mounting location. Now, when you're doing this, Keep in mind, you know, running your wiring and any moving parts on, uh, whether you're mounting these on a tractor or a truck, whatever the case may be, just keep all that stuff in mind when you're choosing a mounting location. I originally wanted to mount mine right up here on this nice flat surface. I was gonna do one here and one over here. The only problem with that is the Bad Boy Maverick comes with this foot area that you can lift up and that gives you easy access to everything underneath, your deck, your spindles, your belt. I don't wanna lose that access. I don't wanna lose the ability to be able to pick this area up. If I put them here, I obviously can't do that. So I'm gonna just kinda, of, there's a, a little slanted area right here where if I mount them in this spot, you know, one here, one on this side, I'm still gonna be able to pick my foot area up. I've already checked underneath. I can run, I have a clear path to run the wiring right back to the battery and to where we're gonna put the switch. So just keep all that stuff in mind when you choose a location. So I'm gonna grab my drill bits and uh, we'll get these brackets mounted and then we'll get the lights on and run the wiring. When you're looking in your hardware pack, there's a whole bunch of hardware. When you take all this stuff out, there's one bigger bolt that's the bolt that you're gonna to use to mount the brackets, okay? So when I'm drilling my holes here, I wanna make it just big enough to be able to get that bolt through there, not any bigger. You never wanna to go too big, obviously, especially when you're drilling into something like this. All right, so the biggest bolt, there's only one of them in each pack, the biggest bolt is the bolt that you're gonna to use to mount the bracket. So you're gonna to wanna to take the bracket and that bigger bolt, like I mentioned, no washers or anything on this side. As you can see, hopefully in the video, the bracket comes with these two little grooves, or not grooves, they're like kind of areas that pop up. That way when you, you pop the bolt in there, that stops the bolt from spinning, it'll help you tighten it up. So no washers or anything on this side. So we're gonna put the bracket down, pop that through there. Then you're gonna, you're gonna wanna go with the flat washer 
and again there's only one of these sizes then next up is the lock washer and then of course the nut now we haven't tightened everything down just yet but when it comes to putting the pod on the bracket the other hardware in the kit you're going to take these washers that look like this they have little grooves on them hopefully you can see that in the video and they go in between when you put the pod light in here in the bracket they're going to go in between the pod light and the bracket on the inside then you'll take your allen wrench in the i'm sorry your allen bolt um it does come with the correct size allen key to turn it and on that you're going to put one of the smaller you're going to take your bolt small lock washer flat washer and that's going to go through to mount the pod onto the bracket so again that washer with the grooves goes in between on the inside of the bracket in between the bracket and the light and you may need like four hands for this part but that's how you're going to secure the light to the bracket and we're just going to kind of snug these up i'm not going to tighten anything down just yet so we can make some final adjustments once we have the wiring ran and we see the beam pattern and everything like that so we'll just kind of snug it up for right now and then we'll go back and tighten it all up at the end so we just repeated the process over here on the other side. We obviously have both pots mounted. Now, they do send you these Deutsch connectors. So what you can do is you can connect these Deutsch connectors, one on each side. And again, this is no matter what you're mounting it on, vehicle, tractor, whatever. So you can connect the Deutsch connectors there, run them back to the battery and connect them at the battery. Well, obviously you're gonna have to run it to a switch as well. And I will cover that. But sticking with the unorthodox theme, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna cut these Deutsch connectors off and I'll show you why. So we're gonna, but I'm actually, I'm gonna save them. I'm gonna use them for a different project. So here's what we're gonna do. This side, we're gonna cut off up here. Set that aside. This side, we're gonna cut off a little bit shorter or actually the, uh, the end we're cutting off is a little bit longer, I should say. So we'll go right in around there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run the this wiring from this pod over. Okay, sorry, I actually I just had to think that through. I'm gonna have the switch on this side of the tractor. So we are gonna do it this way. We're gonna take the wiring from this side. I'm gonna run it behind this orange area because there's a bottom here. So I'm gonna run it behind this orange area. I'm gonna pop it out over here. I'm gonna connect the two pods up here in the front and then I'm just gonna run the single um, positive and negative back. And I'm not gonna show you, it's gonna be hard to get the angle. Um, what I'm gonna do to connect these, I'll show you that real quick, cause I do get a lot of questions on how I make my wiring connections um, with all of the projects we do. But once we connect these, I'm basically just gonna run the wiring. There's an area back in here, which you can't see, that's gonna pop out underneath the foot pad. And then I'm gonna be able to run the wiring. I'm gonna use these little wire holders they're double backing tape. I'm gonna stick them to the underside of this bar here and use zip ties to just keep the wiring up away from the spindles and the belt, run it straight back, and that goes right into where my battery is. It's gonna be perfect. The switch is gonna be mounted up here. Again, I'll show you all this in a little bit better detail once I get it done, but that's how we're gonna do it. So let me get this ran over here and I'll show you exactly how I, how I make my connections because I do get a lot of questions on that. So let me show you how to make these connections. And guys, this is what I do just about every project that I've done. Um, if you've been around the channel, you know we wire a lot, whether it's on the truck, on the boat, whatever the case may be. But this is pretty much how I connect my wiring and the things that I use. So what you're looking at is we have the wiring from this pod, the wiring from the other pod right here that I ran behind that orange bar. All we're gonna do is take the two reds, the two positives, twist them together, take a weatherproof butt connector and this is a 16 gauge that's the other thing real quick too um last fit recommends at least 16 gauge wiring um if you're going to extend the harnesses and the wiring like we are so again all i did was take the two reds from both pods twist them together we're going to put them into this weatherproof 
butt connector and you might have to kind of twist it on there just because you do have two wires in there. So it might be a little bit snug. We're gonna crimp those down. Give a little tug, make sure it's nice and secure. Then out the other end of that, this wiring is the wiring that's going back to the switch and the battery. So all we're gonna do is take the red, trim off, strip a little bit. And actually before I do that, I do like to use, even though these butt connectors are weatherproof, I also like to use this heat shrink tubing. And I have red and black, obviously for positive negative. So we're gonna cut off a strip that's maybe two to three times longer than the butt connector. Let's slide this over that wiring. Now, on the other end of that butt connector, we're gonna pop the positive to the wiring that's going back to the switch and battery. And we're gonna go ahead and crimp that down. Give it a little tug, make sure it's secure. We're gonna grab the heat gun, heat that up, and get that connection nice and secure. And then we'll slide the heat shrink tubing over it. And uh, that way it's 100% weatherproof. This is obviously an outdoor setting and you know, it might be a little bit wet underneath here. You want this to be completely weatherproof. And this is, these, are the, these are the exact type of connections I do even on my boat um, trailer, the LEDs I have on the trailer that get completely submerged in water. I have never once had an issue by doing this kind of connection with the wireproof. And of course guys, there's other ways. I'm not saying this is the only way you can solder. You can do it different ways, but this is the way I do all of my wiring and I've never had a single issue with my connections. So as you can see, we have that heat shrink covering all sealed up. That's a three to one shrink. You want it big enough to where you can slide it over the butt connector easily in the wiring, but you want it to be able to shrink down so it's nice and secure. And um, that adhesive in there is nice and tight. There's no way water can get into those connections. So now we're just gonna do the same thing for the black. We're gonna connect the two blacks, two negatives, one from each light, twist them together. Take another butt connector and repeat the process. Take the black that goes back to the battery and the switch, put it in the other end. So as you can see, we have two weather tight, airtight connections. No way anything can get in there. So let's follow the wiring back. Again, as I mentioned before, I just have it run, um, ran underneath this crossbar right here using those, uh, those wire cable uh, ties that I showed you. And I'll link all the stuff that I'm using in the video down below in case you guys wanna do something similar and you just want a direct link. So let me take you back to where we're gonna mount the switch. I'll show you, cause I get a lot of questions on this as well on how you wire up to a switch with something, with a setup like this. So let's go back to where we have the switch mounted and I'll show you how we get that connected. We're gonna be using a switch, a simple switch, just like this. It's just the three prong. As you can see, it has the three prongs on the back. All you're gonna do, and a lot of people get confused on this, but it's very, very simple. So this is the wiring coming back from the pod lights, positive and negative. The negative from the pod lights, that's gonna go directly to the negative side of the battery. So I'm just gonna set that aside. That's gonna go direct to the negative of the battery or ground. I just, I take mine to the battery, but it just has to go to a ground. The positive from the LED pod lights, we're gonna use these female connectors. So the positive from the pod lights, we're gonna put one of these connectors on here. And this is gonna to go to the middle spot. It's the accessory spot on the switch. Now I, I obviously have to tighten these down with my crimpers and everything, but you're just gonna connect positive from the pods to the middle prong. Now all you're gonna do is take another piece of wiring, just cut a piece of wiring, and just for demonstration's sake, I'll use this wiring that I have here. It's just a spare piece. And you're gonna take the positive, the, the prongs on here, you're, you're not gonna be able to see them. Maybe I'll take a picture and put it on the screen, but they're labeled. This prong over here is the positive, this is the negative. So using two more, using two more of the female connections, we're just gonna pop those on the wiring. The positive 
is going to go to the positive prong and then to the positive side of the battery. The negative is going to go to the negative prong to the negative side of the battery. Okay, it's that simple. So in essence, you're going to have two wires going to the negative. You're going to have the negative from the switch and the negative from the pod lights. The positive from the pods comes here and then there's a positive that goes from here to the battery. Hopefully that makes sense. If you guys have any questions on that, let me know. But it really is that simple. Don't overthink it when you're using a simple three prong switch um, like the one I have here. That's all you got to do. If anybody wants to do this exact install on this exact tractor, let me just show you what I did. So the wiring comes up along that bar on the underneath. You can see it pops out right down in here, ran it up. And here's what I did. I took off the shift panel right here. All it is is four Allen screws right here. You can see one, two, three, four. If you remove those four screws, you can loosen up this panel. So I drilled a small hole right here in this black casing and then came over here and drilled the bigger hole for the switch. So let me just show you. We'll pop that switch in there. Fits in there perfectly. It's going to have easy access when I'm on the tractor. And then again, the wiring just comes out here. And now I just have to make my connections at the battery. And I'll show you guys how... Uh, break these things are we'll take them for a test run i'm sure you guys are aware it's extremely tough to catch lighting on video so i'm going to show you this this clip real quick and again it's a little tough to tell how bright they are but if you pay attention when i'm turning the tractor you can really kind of see how far out they shine and even how high they go up into the trees um, but i'm also going to put some pictures on your screen here and what you're looking at is there are pictures that i took on my iphone 12 pro max and i had the phone completely stationary and I took a picture with the, the lights off and then the lights on. It's the exact same picture. Uh, picture You could even see in, in the one set, you know, you could even look at the clouds just so you know, you know, it's they were literally taken back to back same time of day. Um, the only there was no editing involved with these pictures. The only thing I did was turn off the flash for obvious reasons. So the pictures give you a little bit better idea of of how bright they are and how much output they have. Um, again, the video is just really tough to catch that that lighting on camera. But you can clearly see in the pictures how bright these things are. I won't have any trouble um, from now on cutting the grass in low light conditions. All right, guys, there you have it. You can see exactly how bright these things are. I don't have to worry about cutting the grass, running out of daylight anymore. Um, these things are, the brightness is insane. So if you guys have any questions on the install, uh, comment down below. I'll get them addressed for you. Make sure you check these things out. Don't forget, code um, discount code JUDGE10 will save you 10% site-wide with LastFit, including these LED pods. Links for these will be down below. Links for everything used for the wiring and all that good stuff will be down below the video. Like I said, any questions, let me know. We'll get them addressed. We'll see you on the next video. Take care.